you know what? I don't, you know, people ask me these kind of questions uh, quite a lot. Why are you playing here? Why aren't you playing here? Da -de -da -de. The truth is that it's, there's no one easy answer to that question. There are so many factors. That obviously, there's routing. We're going down to Mexico now, so it kind of made sense to stop off somewhere on the way. Um, it's down to local promoters. I mean, some people have no idea who I am, and they won't book me, you know. We get asked a lot of questions like, why have you never come to our city? Why do you ignore us? It's, you know, and they feel like, they say it like they're insulted. The simple reason is that there may, no, there may not have been a promoter that's ever wanted to have me play there. And uh, there's also the obviously the, the 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 financial aspect as well. This is not a this is not a movable feast. We have to have a certain degree of of uh, money to make this work. And any one or all three of those factors can be the reason why we play a certain place rather than another place, or we don't play another, or we don't play any place at all. So I don't know the the simple answer to your question is it's probably something to do with the facts on the way down to Mexico. We had a good offer from the promoter that would cover our costs. Oh, more, feel? more than a bit, yeah. Well, I think these days the the, the conventional ways of, of advertising just don't work. At least they don't work for me, or they don't work for the kind of music that I play. Because the simple reason is the kind of people that listen to the music I play don't look in those places. You know, the people that like you know whatever you want to call it, art rock, progressive rock, the more kind of sophisticated end of rock music, they don't watch MTV, they don't read Rolling Stone, they don't read Spin, they you know they don't go to Pitchfork Media, or maybe some of them do. But most of those guys look for their music through word of mouth, through personal recommendation, through friends to say, hey, you know what, you like this band, you've got to check out Steve Wilson, or you like King Crimson, you've got to check out Porky Country. That's how it works. That's actually how it's almost always worked for me since the beginning. So for me, the the internet and the street team have been absolutely key in in kind of. I mean, for example, one of the things, the great things the street team would did, which which was like make sure that there were good and you know a good amount of reviews on things like Amazon and stuff like that and Play.com and those things are, are invaluable, really. So the answer, the answer to your question is, uh, I, I would love to continue to, to kind of cultivate that mm -hmm. as long as people out there want to support me. Um, that that's fantastic. Well, there's no doubt that it's hindered me uh, because, you know, radio play until, I don't know about so much now, but until comparatively recently, it was still the, the, the predominant way that you could reach a mainstream audience. They never gave me much support, so consequently my music has never reached a mainstream audience. It's been more a kind of gradual word of mouth process. In a way, I like that because mm -hmm. it means that the, the fans are not fickle. You know, you think of all the people that listened to Hootie and the Blowfish in the, in the 90s, and none of them are listening to Hootie and the Blowfish now, because, right. you know, the, that's the kind of what you can do with mainstream media support. You can have a massive, massive hit, and then suddenly you disappear the next year. I don't think that's, I don't think, I hope that will never happen to my music, because I think the people that appreciate what I do are people that really are true, they're through thick and thin kind of fans, mm -hmm. you know. So, in a way, I'm not, I'm not, you know, too disappointed that it's taken me, that I've had to do it the hard way, because I think that the foundations for the fan base are much more solid. Mm -hmm. But of course I'd be lying if I said, you know, I'd love to have seen, you know, Lazarus, for example, be a big radio hit, right. or Blackfield be a big radio Because to me they seemed very accessible, and if only people had got to hear them, they would have probably loved them in, in you know, tens, hundreds of thousands. That's been frustrating, yeah. That's a difficult question to answer because they're not involved in the writing, but they are involved in my thought process of mm -hmm. the writing. What I mean by that is I'm writing specifically knowing now how what these guys can do. And they can do music that is much more technically um, accomplished than, than I ever could. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, than Pork Pantry or Blackfield could do. Um, that's not to say those bands aren't great, but these guys are, they have the chops to be able to do things that I could imagine, but I could never play before. Mm. So now I'm writing music that actually I couldn't play myself, which is the first time I've kind of done that. Um, so well, you'll hear one of the pieces tonight, it's a very long piece. All the pieces I've written so far are quite long, they're quite mm -hmm. involved, they're quite old school in a way, old school progressive. Um, uh, ho hopefully still with a contemporary edge. 
but they are definitely more involved, more intense, more complex, um, still melodically, you know, strong and, and catchy. I, I've never been interested in making music that was complicated for the sake of it or technical for the sake of it. But I do like great musicianship, and I like I like things that are kind of challenging musically. So it's a bit early to say, but I definitely say continuation of perhaps the more old school progressive tendencies. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, definitely, a, definitely a, a, a kind of like taking grace for drowning, but putting more flesh and more kind of more more bones around it. Uh, flesh on the bones, I should say. Um, these musicians, for example, I feel play the stuff on Grace for Drowning in a much more in-your-face kind of vibrant way than the studio versions. Mm -hmm. So I'm now looking to actually try and harness that kind of edge and that power right from the beginning. You know, in terms of the writing and the, and the recording. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing with that. I think, you know, one of the things I've got used to in my career is that um, the, the expectation for an established artist is always there. The, the kind of... Um, everyone comes to a new record with their own agenda. Now, Porcupine Tree, for example, to take, to take one, you know, my best-known uh, band, is a band that have reinvented themselves probably two or three times over the course mm -hmm. of, of 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Each time we did that, um, of course we lost fans but we gained new fans. And I think that's part of the deal. One thing I really don't like is when people tell me they don't like the new record and there's some implication that it's my fault and that I've done something wrong. The truth of the matter is that the band or the project or whatever it is has simply moved into a direction that doesn't personally appeal to them. But of course we're, you know, we're all in our own way, because it's human nature, quite self-righteous about our opinions. So if, for example, you use the example of Heritage, the death metal fans will say Michael Ackerfeld has sold out, the new album sucks, he can't write music anymore, blah blah blah. The, the bottom line is simple, they've gone in a direction that doesn't appeal to them. The music is just as creative, just as inventive, just as innovative, just as powerful and spiritual as it ever was, mm -hmm. but it doesn't appeal to them because they just want more of the same. And I think that is valid from their point of view, but of course the whole way we choose to express these things as human beings is usually to, to be, you know, suggest that somehow the artist has failed or the artist has let you down. And, and I think Storm Corrosion is an example of an album that will probably disappoint people who are expecting some kind of progressive metal supergroup, but I would never for one second accept that the record is anything less than a strong, creative, spiritually honest piece of work. It's a good question. I don't really know how to answer it. I mean, Porcupine Tree started as a solo project of mine, mm -hmm. became a band, became a very democratic unit where everyone contributed very equally to the sound. We did 10 albums in the space of 20 years. We worked our asses off. We toured a lot. We, mm -hmm. we were, And I think that at the end of the Incident album cycle, I felt that I needed to do some other things for a while. And I think they did too, to be fair. Um, so the question comes down to how how long is it going to be before we get back together again? Because it, we will. There's no doubt we will get mm -hmm. back together again. The problem is that the, the, the people are people journalists like yourself that, and, and fans too are always asking when, when, when. I don't really know. It's it's one of those things that um, it, when it feels right, we'll do it. I don't want to do it for the sake of it. So yes, I was kind of saying last year we'll probably get back together early this year. But to be honest, by the time I got to that point. For me, creatively, it would have been the worst thing to have broken off from all the, the creative and momentum I had with Grace for Drowning and the tour. And I knew that I wanted to stay with this. In terms of just, just I mean, the response to the album was so good. The band I put together just blew my mind. I had, I had ideas for songs straight away that I knew this band would be the band to play, not, not Tree. So you can't really put a date on something like that. You know, it's like saying to a, uh, a teenager, when are you going to get married and have kids? 
you know, when you meet right. the right girl, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't know is the simplest thing. There's no question that the band is breaking up or anything like right, that, right. you know, and we're still always talking about, you know, when ourselves, we're talking a bit, a bit between ourselves about when, when we might do it. But it's not going to happen for, realistically, it's not going to happen yet. Um, but it will happen.